In this problem, we're told a crate with a mass 32.5 kilograms initially at rest on a warehouse floor is acted on by a net horizontal force of 14 newtons. A. What acceleration is produced? B. How far does the crate travel in 10 seconds? And C. What is its speed at the end of the 10 seconds? So let's draw what's going on here. So we have this floor and we've got this box on it. And so we know the mass of the box is 32.5 kilograms. So, and then we know it's also going to have a net horizontal force of 14 newtons. So we've got this force, 14 newtons, it's going to be pushing on the box. So this is a drawing. Let's write down what we're given. So what are we told? We're told the mass of the box, M, I'm going to denote it as M, equals 32.5 kilograms. And so we know kilograms is mass, so that's telling us this is the mass. So 32.5 kilograms. We know the force being acted on it force is going to be 14 newtons so 14 n is the force and then we also or what we're trying to find first is the acceleration produced so i'm going to write a equals question mark b is going to be how far does the crate travel in 10 seconds so i'm going to call that delta x our change in x i'm going to say that equals question mark and then c what is its speed at the end of the 10 seconds so the speed at the end Right? So it's going to travel for 10 seconds essentially in this second part. So the speed at the end, I'm going to call V, just the final velocity. And so I'm going to say that equals question mark because we don't know that. So what is told to us, or what do we know about this that isn't explicitly told? So we know the initial velocity of the box, since it's at rest, right, is, is going to be zero. So we call V sub zero, the initial velocity, it's going to be zero meters per second. <gasps> and then time, right? During these intervals, they're the same, right? So 10 seconds is our interval for both, right? So the time for this is going to be 10 seconds. So that's going to be our given. Let's go ahead and actually start solving. So A is going to be the acceleration produced. So notice how we're given these variables. It's going to be like kinematics we can solve for the acceleration. And so what well, we're going to do an extra step. So we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. So if we want acceleration, we can just take the force and divide it by the mass, right? So you actually don't need to do kinematics at all for this first step solely because we're given the mass and the force. Usually you have to solve for one of the variables or usually you solve for acceleration and you can plug it in. But in this case, we can just do the acceleration, right? By dividing force over mass because uh, we know force equals mass times acceleration. So if we divide the force by the mass, we get acceleration. So A is going to be equal to the force, which is 14, and then the mass is 32.5. And make sure when you do this, your mass is in kilograms, and this is in newtons. And so when you do this, you're going to get the acceleration equals 0.43. And then when this is in newtons, and this is in kilograms, it's going to be measured in meters per second squared. So we just found A, 0.43 meters per second squared. So that's A. Now let's move on to B. So how far does the crate travel? So for this, we're actually going to have to use kinematics. And so notice how we are given a bunch of variables. We have acceleration now, we have time, and we have the initial velocity. So what you should realize is we can solve for delta x, or the change in position essentially, the distance we travel, by using the formula delta x equals v sub 0 times t plus 1 half a t squared, right? Because we have the time, 10 seconds, we have v sub 0, and we have a, so we can solve for delta x. So all we have to do is just plug in v sub zero, we know is it's at rest, so zero times t, which is 10 plus one half times a, which we just solved for 0.43 times t squared, which is 10 squared. So notice how this is gonna become zero, zero times 10 is just zero. So e was zero plus, but I'm not gonna write this zero. So it's going to be 1 half times 0.43 times 10 squared. Plug this in your calculator. You're going to get that it equals 21.5. Uh, and then keep in mind the units. This is meters per second, right? And meters per second squared. So our distance unit is meters. So this is going to be your answer to B. How far it travels is going to be 21.5 meters. So it's going to travel 21.5 meters. All right, and then our box is going to end up here. And so now what we're trying to find is the speed at the end of the 10 seconds. So essentially, the speed right here, right? 
so v equals question mark. Uh, let's go ahead and solve for that now. So we can use different formulas to solve for this. I'm going to use this one, which is v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. You can use a different one because we have it uh, every single variable now. So I'm just going to use this one, though, because I think it's the easiest. So if we just plug in, right, because we know v sub 0, we know a, and we know the time. So we can just solve for v. So plugging it in, v sub 0 is 0 plus acceleration 0.43 times our time, which is 10 seconds, right? So it's just 0.43 times 10. If you go ahead and do that, you're going to get 4.3. And then the units of this is going to be meters per second because we're using meters in seconds. So equals 4.3 meters per second. So this right here is going to be your answer to C. So C is 4.3 meters per second. B is 21.5 meters. And then this is right here, your A, right? A is asking for acceleration. So A is 0.43 meters per second squared. And so, yeah, those are going to be your answers and how you solve this problem. And hopefully you found this useful.